Welcome to the Illuminar Horticultural Automated Systems Hub, otherwise known as HASH. The following instructional videos will talk you through the main components that will enable you to automate some or all of the equipment attached to your garden, whilst also giving you visibility into a range of environmental data points that you can use as triggers to create automated activities and tasks or fail-safes to protect your garden from falling out of its optimum growth conditions. The ecosystem comprises of four main components. The lighting hash controller that can control up to six wireless devices, up to a thousand wired fixtures and two relay circuits. The wireless relay power cord for automating equipment the wireless environment sensor, which monitors conditions. And of course, the Hash app that controls it all. The first step to automating your garden is to connect one or more lighting hash controllers, which act as wireless base stations for all the sensors and relays you are going to be installing. Unpack the lighting hash controller from its box. Screw in the wireless antenna to the back side. Insert the terminal plugs into the front and plug in the mains adapter just next to them. To attach the temperature probes, simply insert positive and negative connections into the temp terminals in the zone you're looking to monitor and screw down the wire clamps. To attach lighting fixtures to the controller, simply plug in an RJ11-14 cable to control HID type lighting or an LED to hash cable in order to control LED. Both are available from Illuminar or your local retailer. There will be a blue flashing light next to the AC power cord, which means the unit is ready to attach to a network. If not, press the setup button. You're now ready to connect your controller to the app. Download and install the app from the iTunes or Android store. Once the app is installed, you can now create your hash account. Now follow the on-screen prompts to locate and attach your controller. Please note that the hash app requires that your phone's location services or GPS and wireless connectivity or Wi-Fi are both switched on whenever you use it. If you can't connect for any reason, check that both of these services are switched on and reset your controller to re-establish the connection. Once you're connected to your controller, follow the on-screen prompts to attach the controller to your wireless network. You are now connected and can configure the controller adding a name, geographic location and time zone in order to allow the systems to work with an accurate schedule. Make sure you save all your selections before finishing to return to the main screen. To configure your attached fixtures for full sunrise and sunset functionality, select settings from the main screen, then configure modules and choose your controller from the list. The module details screen has lots of functionality. It allows you to hide the module from the devices screen, set zone temperature baselines, and attach any 0 to 48 volt wired device to either of two of the relay circuits, one per zone. You can customize each zone's name and enable dimming by telling the controller what fixtures are being controlled and make sure you save each new setting before exiting to the main screen. As mentioned, the lighting hash controller can control up to 500 fixtures per zone, depending on the type of light fixture used, with additional child controllers added to the first as a parent, enabling an almost infinite amount of lights to be controlled through the same hash ecosystem. To add another controller, simply repeat the previous steps 
Then, to switch between the units, select the controller menu at the top left of the main screen and select the controller you want to use from the drop down list. Now your controller or controllers are attached, you can use all the functionalities of this main unit. But to get even more out of the hash ecosystem, make sure you attach environment sensors and relay power cords in order to monitor your garden and automate any equipment with an electrical plug. Relay power cords enable almost anything you usually plug into a power socket to be automated using rules, timers, schedules, or simply to be controlled wirelessly via the app. To use a relay power cord, remove the packaging, unplug the equipment you want to control, and then plug the relay power cord into the mains outlet. Reattach the equipment plug to the corresponding socket on the relay power cord, and then return to the Hash app on your device. Please note that the RPC is rated to a constant current of 7 amps, and many motors, compressors and pumps can draw 5 to 10 times their regular current upon startup. This could damage the module, so please refer to your original equipment manufacturer's instructions to ensure that peak current does not exceed that 7 amp constant threshold. To configure your relay power cord on the app, from the main screen, select Settings, then Configure Modules. From here, press the plus symbol at the top right to add a new module. Select your relay power cord from the list and then select Register to connect. If, for whatever reason, your module can't be found, either manually scan the QR code from the packaging or type in the serial number, which you can find on the power relay cord itself and also on the box it came in. You can now name the unit and tell the hash ecosystem what type of equipment it is, thereby setting up its automation parameters. Don't forget to save your changes, but after that, you're pretty much done. You can now fully control the equipment via the hash ecosystem. But to complete any automation system, it helps to know what's going on in the garden. So why don't you attach an environment sensor or two? The environment sensor is a unique piece of equipment that gathers data from your garden. Unpack the environment sensor and attach the eyelet hook to the sensor hole in the top of the unit. And then hang it in a central position in your garden at around the height of your canopy. Once the sensor is hung, attach the power cord to the bottom and the extension cable if needed, but in order to use your environment sensor, it must be connected to the Hash app. Open your app, and from the main screen, select Settings, then Configure Modules. Select the plus symbol from the top right, and select the controller from the list of detected devices. If, for whatever reason, your module can't be found, either manually scan the QR code from the packaging, or type in the serial number, which you can find on the base of the environment sensor or in the packaging which it came in. Once the module is registered, you can change its name, aggregate its data to several other environment sensors across your garden, hide the module from the main screen and dashboard, and even send alerts if it goes offline. You can also configure temperature, humidity, vapor pressure deficit, light levels, and CO2. Once you've finished setting up your environment sensor, make sure you save your settings before returning to the main screen. With an environment sensor attached to your hash ecosystem, you now have a huge array of data available to you. So now let's learn how to utilize it. Now that we have the basics of your garden in place, it's time to show you around the dashboard and devices tabs on the main screen. The main screen has two menus, the controller menu on the left for selecting a controller you want to use, and the settings menu on the right, which is where all the startup and connectivity controls are. Below them are the four tabs on the main screen, the dashboard, devices, rules, and journal tabs. Select dashboard and you'll be able to see all the data coming out of your sensors the thermal probe readings from your lighting hash controller, and the temperature, humidity, VPD, light and CO2 levels from your environment sensors. If you select any one of the data points, you'll be able to scroll through real-time data, the last 10 minutes, the last hour, and the last 24 hours of data pulled directly from the journal feature. 
Devices tab is where you can quickly control every aspect of your garden simply and easily. To use any of the controls, first switch your control lock to off, which defaults to on in order to avoid any mistake activations. Each of the controller relays and lighting controls, plus equipment control by relay power cord, can be switched from off to automatic to on with the lights of course also being dimmable. The rules tab on the main screen is where you can set up the full automation of your garden by creating rules that regulate your attached modules by schedule, a set routine and also can be triggered by data parameters coming from your environmental sensors. To set up a new rule, from the Rules tab, select Add Rule and you'll see the four rule types. Sensor triggers, timers, schedules and manual tasks. If you select a sensor trigger, this allows you to create a rule that uses environmental data from any of the sensors attached to your hash ecosystem as a trigger to perform an action. As an example, let's create a rule that uses room temperature as a trigger. We'll set it up to switch on if the temperature goes above 80 Fahrenheit. And to switch off when it drops below 75. We'll attach it to a fan powered by a relay power cord. And add a name in order to describe what it does. And of course, as with all other settings, don't forget to save it before you exit. Once rules are set up, you can check their status at any time on the Rules tab from the main screen, and you can modify their action whenever needed. For our second example, let's try a timer. From the main screen, select the Rules tab and then Add Rule. Select Timers from the menu, and you can set up the parameters. Timers are for regular daily repeatable tasks of a set length. Say, for instance, daily watering. First, select the equipment you want to be activated. Then, the time of day. Then, select the frequency of the activity. In this case, every four hours. After that, set the duration of the task. How long you want it to switch on for. And add a name in order to describe what it does. Make sure you save all your changes as always and it will appear under the Device Rules tab. Schedules work in exactly the same manner but are for regular tasks across the week. From every day to a set day or multiple days. As with all other rules, make sure you save changes before you exit. Manual tasks are just that and they're easy to set up. Just pick your equipment and the duration you want it to switch on for. It's a task you want to trigger yourself from the app, which will show up on the Devices tab along with all of the other equipment controls. The Rules tab also allows you to create sensor alerts that will notify you by email if a set environmental parameter falls outside a set threshold for a set period of time. You can even add a secondary email address or a push notification to the alert, always remembering to save the settings before you exit. The final tab on the main screen is the journal, where you can view all of the data produced by active sensors attached to your garden. By default, the data streams are shown in real time, with the last four hours of data including minimum, maximum and average trend lines. However, it's also possible to view data from any date or set date range on the calendar. From the journal tab on the main screen, select date in the top left corner to open the calendar function. To select the day you want to view, simply tap it on the screen and then return to the journal. To select a date range, first tap the start date you'd like to see and then the end date of the range and return to the journal. You'll now be able to analyze every parameter looking for trends and areas of improvement across your garden. The Hash ecosystem is the first truly modular and scalable automation platform that can automate any horticultural installation, from a 5x5 grow tent to a multi-greenhouse mega-complex. With a nearly infinite number of configurations, what will Hash automate for you?